I have been trying to figure out how I want to start this video for like an hour. I think I've decided I'm going to start it just like this. Let's do it, boy. Welcome to this video. It's going to be part two of the Blitz Beginner's Guide. I figured I should make one because a lot of people asked me a ton of questions afterwards and they were like, you didn't even cover this stuff. And I was like, yo, I didn't know people needed that stuff covered. So, beginner blitz guide, part dos, mother brothers. <laughs> Take that YouTube algorithm. So essentially what we're gonna be covering in this video is going to be even further basic stuff because a lot of people asked for it and they were like, hey, we see what you did, but a lot of people ask questions about this so i have a list of a few things and we're just going to talk about them and this is going to be really basic stuff again just like the other one if you're a later game player maybe not helpful but if you don't watch it you won't get to see this face yes. and you know you want to see that the amount of people who just clicked off of this video because of the face i just made it's probably going to be pretty high but i can live with that because it was a beautiful face so let's look at blitz one of the big questions that I was asked was the multiplier coupled with the tiers. So we're going to talk about this just a little bit and hopefully if there's any further questions you guys can let me know in the comments below and I'll try to clarify even further but I'm going to do the best job that I can to just let it be clear right now is so you have the tiers right so you see the tier up there tier eight you start at one, it goes through eight. So you have tier one through eight on Blitz. And the way that this works is each tier has four battles. And you do essentially the way that this is referred to uh, by later game players is if you're in tier one, you'd have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. And then the next one would be 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, .2 so on and so forth. So if you hear someone reference, oh yeah, I just need to do such and such in blitz 8.3 what that means is when you essentially max it out because it doesn't go above 8.3 that's the highest you can get so if someone says 8.3 it just means as maxed out tier wise and that's how you can get the most points now sometimes what people will do say you don't have that great of a roster say you get to like tier five or six and you're having a really hard time something you can do is you can lose, you can intentionally lose battles. And I hinted at this in my last video and some people were really confused about why you would wanna do that. What you can do is you can take some of your teams, say you have minions or whatever. So say right now, I'm at tier eight. And there's two ways that this works. So let me do a side note really quickly here. You have tier eight. And if I'm at tier 8.2 and I lose a battle, I'm gonna drop down to eight. If I lose another battle, I'm gonna drop down to seven so on and so forth. So at seven, I'll go to six, five, four, three, two, one. But say if I drop down to seven and then do another battle and I win and I'm at 7.2 and then I lose, I'm gonna go back down to seven. So essentially, if you're not right at the beginning, you have to lose two in a row to drop down a tier. Again, you'll get less points, but if it's a lot easier to win, maybe you don't have as much time, you just wanna be able to do auto battles because you can think, well, I can do more auto battles than I can sitting and paying attention to them. If that's the case, then I would say it's pretty important to just go ahead and drop down to whatever tier you're comfortable in. Now that's gonna be up to you. I'm comfortable in 8.3, but I've been playing for so long and you guys, if you remember from the last video, you could see my teams and they're really strong. Now, that's not going to be the case for everyone, and I don't expect that to be the case for everyone. But, essentially, that is going to be how you can manipulate tiers to help you, is that you can go up and down. And let's look at some teams that you can essentially use. A lot of times, what I will do is I'll pick a character. Say I have a... You guys, this may not work for you guys, um, but this is what I do. Say I pick a character that doesn't have a lot of attack value. So, Kingpin. Kingpin's great. He gives offense up and defense up but he's not gonna solo anything on his own. You take him and you put in a bunch of minions. So these are characters that I haven't been able to level up yet. And you can just go and you can put them in. And even just looking at, say, let's pick what would probably be the most easily lost battle, which will be this one because it has Captain Marvel in it. We look at the stats, Captain Marvel's at 29,000. And so she's the strongest character on this team, which bodes well for you losing because if she uses her alt, 
her first turn, which she will. She's going to wipe out everybody except for Kingpin, and then it's going to be a 5v4, or 5v1, excuse me. And then it's not going to matter, you know what I mean? So then you're going to you're gonna drop down for sure. Now, there used to be an old trick, and I'll show you. We're going to load on into this battle here just so I can show you. There used to be an old trick that you didn't have to lose the battle. You could just go in and you could quit, and that doesn't work anymore. You used to be able to do that. I'm not sure why they changed it. I guess they didn't want people manipulating tiers, but you still can. I'm not sure why. So if you go into this battle, and like I said, exactly like what I said is going to happen. Captain Marvel's going to go. She's going to blow. Okay, she's going to blow him up, but then that's going to kill everybody. So then see what I mean? So now I could drop down a tier if I just continue to play this battle because Kingpin, while he has a lot of health, he can't do like any damage. So there used to be another trick that you could do, and you could just do this, and you could hit quit and that would drop you down a tier. That no longer works. This is just kind of like, for example, if you're in a battle and you're gonna lose and you don't want to drop down because that happens sometimes, sometimes you get surprised or make some mistakes, you can just hit quit. It'll take you right back to the tier that you were in before, nothing changes. It's essentially as if nothing happened except these characters were used so you would have to use charges to recharge them. We'll talk about that a little more later. So you've learned how to manipulate tiers. You have to figure out where's best for you that's something you're going to have to decide. I can't decide that for you, but you'll have to decide that for yourself is the best tier for you. Whichever one it may be, I don't know. We next want to talk about is the multiplier. So if you see right now, this team can get me 18,000 points if I win. Well, we know I'm not going to win, but let's say let's go to a team that will win. So a lot of you guys, I'm sure, have defenders. So we'll stick our defenders in there and we'll look at this and we'll say, OK, so at tier 8.1 we can win with the defenders if we win we'll get 52,000 points so that's because we get a certain number of points I'm not actually totally sure where that comes from but wherever that number comes from it multiplies it by four and then that's where that comes from I think it has something to do with the team power again I don't know exactly how it's calculated if anyone does I'd love to hear in the comments uh, because that's actually something I've wondered for a very long time so it has something to do with the team power though because you change teams, say you switch to shield, another common team, and now I can get 62,000 points from them. And if you look at it, you have to decide, right? So with the multiplier, it just helps you get a lot of points, but you have to figure out how best to use it. Like I said, if you need to be in a lower tier, then that's fine. Nothing wrong with that, whatever works for you. You know, nobody's going to be going around like, what tier are you in Blitz? I need to know because nobody's going to do that. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be fine. Like, just use whatever you can use and have realistic expectations. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going to be at a lower tier, you're going to have to play a bit more. That's just a fact, but maybe you can play it on auto, like I said. As far as rewards go, I would say if you can, try and go to finish out these milestones. A lot of endgame players only go for milestones because it's time consuming. Even with my roster, I only have to do maybe four, maybe four or five full runs to clear to get to about the points that I'm at right now. And, you know, it's kind of just like, I do it because I stream. If I didn't stream or if I make videos, I probably would be hard pressed to even finish the milestones every time. So I understand that struggle. Do what feels good to you, but understand that you do get a lot of gold from this and you do get a lot of currency. So if you're able to finish these, you do want to, but at the same time, if you have a smaller roster, don't beat yourself up if you're not finishing it because it's not meant for that. If you're a newer player, maybe you need to set goals for yourself. And if you have, I don't know, I almost have 15 teams here that I use. So counting over these, I have 12 teams that I use. So 12 teams that if you just simply do the math, uh, 12 times five is 60. So say I do about 60 battles which is a crazy number now that I'm even saying it out loud. I never realized it was that many. But so 60 battles over the span of the few days that you have a blitz rotation. And then I get to about a million points. So we could give or take a few, maybe about five, so we could be at 55. And then that will get to just at the milestones. Well, that's at me playing, you know, at these higher tiers without any issue. You know, you may not be able to play past tier six or five. And so for you, it might be like, hey, I got to be on my phone constantly. So just be aware of that and don't stress. If you can't do it, if you have three teams, it's probably not going to work. There's no reason that you need to be 
in the top 100 or even top 1500. I can't remember the last time I ranked in top 1500 because it's just not really worth it. Like sure, you get 50 extra shards, but I mean, you can also get them again later. Remember, I say this a lot, and this is just kind of my practical life advice. Time is much more valuable than anything that you can get in this game. So if you enjoy Blitz, then fine. But I really do recommend just making sure you consider and uh, just think about where your time is going. If you're just sitting on your phone all the time, it can really have adverse effects on your life. So that's my most practical advice. I, I really want people to know that. It seems important. I wish someone had told me. I wasted a lot of time playing Blitz uh, when I first started, and I, I hate that for anybody else. Next thing to talk about here is uh, the Blitz charges. Some people aren't familiar with these, and if you are familiar, you understand, like we showed before, you can just hit a battle and it'll just refresh them. You may not be totally clear on where you get these from or really anything. So I'm gonna talk about that just so that you can maybe learn how to manage them a bit because I didn't really learn how to manage them for a while and it kind of messed me up, I think, in the long run with some stuff or maybe not really. I just ended up playing like more over time than I needed to when I could have just done a bunch of battles all at once. I kind of ended up doing them just over time as the refreshes happened. So what are blitz charges? Blitz charges, you can just basically fight again after a battle. It costs five per character. So as we saw earlier, if you're paying attention, I mentioned earlier we talk about blitz charges, um, and that was right here. It was on there. It said 25 and had the picture of this to recharge after we did the kingpin battle. And essentially, you can pay 25 to reuse those characters before they cool down. Now, the reason why you might want to do that is if you're trying to get your multiplier higher. A lot of times, I only use that with my stronger teams, such as my shield, my brotherhood, my Ultron, characters that are, or teams that are right around 250,000 power. If they're not around 250,000 power, I really don't use it on them because the point gap is just pretty significant and it, it just will not be worth it in the long run. Plus, those are my guaranteed to win teams typically. So how does this help you? So you can use these and it may help you. I don't use mine when I max out. I don't always like, it's not like one of those things where I'm like, oh, I'm about to max out. I got to use them sort of thing. It's not like that. I don't do it like that. I typically do it if I don't have enough time and I want to do something later or whatever. If I don't have the time or if I've been late, uh, for example, if you ever watch my streams, I always wait until the literal last half hour to, to do the premium orb blitz on stream. And typically when I do that, I've got to use these charges because my roster is not going to get me up that many points when I haven't done it yet. That's not really the way I think you guys should use it. The way I think you guys should be using it is essentially you could take your top teams because your roster is going to be smaller. So to try and make it so each run you can get extra points, you can get your tier up higher, you can take whatever your strongest strongest team is, defender, shield, etc., whatever it is, and you could say, okay, so you can do the 25 points three times. And after that, it costs 50. I would never recommend doing the 50 unless you're just in a pinch. Unless you're just like, if I don't do this, I'm not going to reach this next milestone. Like if time's about to run out and it's just like you really have no other choice. That's the only time I would do that. But I don't recommend it because you're just going to end up. It's, it's not good use of it, if that makes sense. It's not like it's not managing it well. And this game is all about management, resource management. And that's just another resource. So with those, you have to manage them. You have to know what you want to do with it. So if you're saying, okay, I want to reach this milestone. Okay, well, that costs however many points. I get this many points from each battle. Well, how many hours are left? Well, an hour and a half. Okay, well, I'm going to have to use charges then because my teams are not going to refresh if I can't get those points. So that's the way you kind of do it. Or you could just even set a goal in advance. You could say, hey, I'm going to do this much and I need to get this many points. And that's just how you have to do it. You have to figure out what you want to do with it. And you have to figure out how you want to do it and just make the best of it. And just, I hope that makes sense. It's hard to really explain because it's going to be different case to case. You're going to just have to manage that well. I don't recommend going above 50 and I recommend just paying attention to them. Now you might be asking right now, hey, well, how do I get those? I'll show you. So we'll go back to the home screen. We'll go to the challenges. When you go to challenges, it's this daily challenge right here. So Monday, Thursday, Sunday, you guys should be pretty familiar with this, but you can plan out your days, right? So you can plan out, 
what you want to do here and obviously you get different ones for different levels you do have to certainly manage them a lot better at lower levels because if you only get 25 per thing you do it three times here that means you only have three refreshes it's going to be really hard for you to max out if you're using them all the time now when you're up here for me, like me for example it's pretty easy to uh manage and make sure that i stay where i need to because if you get 90 every time that's that's plenty that is plenty of enough all right so you might be saying to yourself okay combs like what now then? So essentially, guys, uh, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about. And I briefly touched on it in the last video, but I want to touch on it a bit more. And that is going to be the store. And the store is a bit harder now. Store is a good bit harder now than it used to be. Back in the day, we didn't. We had Spider-Man, Gamora, Crossbones, Luke Cage, AIM, Hydra, Hydra, Kree, Mercenary, Riot Guard, Ravenger, Boomer. So back in my day, you would come in here. I farmed Spider-Man first because I like Spider-Man. Crossbones was really good back at the time. I farmed Crossbones. You know, Gamora was really good. I farmed up Gamora. I got Ravenger Boomer for Star-Lord because Groot was not farmable back in the day. I still recommend that. That's a decent avenue to try and get characters. You will need Groot eventually anyways, but this store is easier. Maybe help you get Star-Lord faster. Uh, Luke Cage was bad when I first started playing before the Defenders rework. They were just terrible. And so I didn't even farm Luke Cage to begin with. But now it's different, right? Because you come in here and everybody's screaming at you like, Oh, farm Defenders! So, okay, so you come in here and the character you want to get is Luke Cage. So you're going to try and be getting Luke Cage. You're going to be putting him down. But then at the same time, you're like, okay, like, I got to farm Crossbones and Gamora and Spider-Man and Miles and Mantis and rhino and it's like all these characters and it's like all oh, at the same time it's like oh like i need to get my war energy and that's just really hard right that's really hard to balance all that especially with like the war stuff so you come in here it's really hard to manage it because you're trying to just figure out what is the best thing to do and to be honest with you guys i don't really know that's a really hard thing and fox next has really put us in a bind putting these war things in the same store that so many essential characters are in. Like, there's three characters in this store that you can farm for Guardians of the Galaxy. Mantis, Gamora, and Ravenger Boomer. Those are three characters you can farm out of here to get Star-Lord. Then Luke Cage, which is essential. Spider-Man, which you need for Shuri. Rhino, which you need for, I mean, Rhino, you can also use for Shuri, but also for Invisible Woman. And it's just crazy because it's like, man, like, what do I want to do? I don't want to let my alliance down. I don't want to not farm these war energies, these war boosts. I don't want to let my guys down. But at the same time, it's like, man, like, if I, I have to choose between letting my guys down and furthering my own roster, these people I might not even be with in a month. So it's hard. It's really, really hard. I know the route that I've taken, I just try to have one or two war energy refills per war i don't max out anymore i don't really have the war energy i don't i don't i don't know it's hard war is draining i'm hoping that they're going to rework it we've talked to them about it quite a bit in the envoy program and we're just not on the same page but i'm hoping that maybe one day we can get it reworked and it just it's just hard the way it's all set up right now but maybe changes will be coming soon that's not a leak that's just a hope so i think it's hard to balance uh, i think that war is important obviously the store is in here you can get gear and stuff out of here. You can get characters out of here. But if I had to say as a new player, I think I would almost more so, it's just hard to say. I think what I would do, and maybe it's not right, but what I would probably do, and people are going to disagree with me in the comments, but I would probably just ignore the war stuff. That's hard uh, because you have to be in an alliance and they'll probably kick you out if you're not doing enough. So that's hard. Um, but just do, do, I guess, minimum. Do it some, but also you don't want your farming to get too messed up. It's just hard. It's a hard spot that they put us in. It's like resource management, but it's like there's just simply not enough resources. And everybody feels that crunch. So hopefully if you're having some issues with your alliance, maybe they can be understanding or maybe you guys can come up with a plan. It's like everybody like, hey, like you need to have two extra attacks. Hey, you need to boost two people per war as opposed to maxing it out. I don't know. It's kind of just a hard spot that everybody's in. So know that that while you're going to be confused and like just having a hard time with that, I, I mean, even I have that. And I have all of these characters finished except for Rhino and Mantis. So it's just one of those things that it's just a resource management. And uh, you just do your best that you can with it and make the best of it. But you definitely want to be farming characters out of here. The first one you start with, Luke Cage, 100%. From there, it's kind of whatever you want to do. Star-Lord is a very good legendary. 
one of the best in the game. I recommend Mantis or Gamora. Mantis is a great healer. She's not bad at all. Gamora, again, can be used for Star-Lord. Uh, Crossbones, at least when I started playing, I think this is still the way it is, is that there's an event, like a campaign event for him. You unlock Crossbones in the beginning along with Elektra. Uh, so Crossbones, you won't even need to necessarily unlock from here. Miles is good. It's just hard to say. It's hard to say what to do with these things. That's really up to you. Cree Royal Guard is used for Nick Fury. Nick Fury is amazing. You can use Mercenary Riot Guard for the payday events, which help you get more gold. It's just hard to say. It's really going to be what you want your path to be. And there's no one who can determine that except for you. You have to decide where you're going to go. That's a whole other video. I don't want to talk. I don't want to get into that because I could talk about the different stores and the different da da da. And you know, and like that could go on for a long time. But so this is just beginner's guide to blitz. So I hope that I have answered your guys' questions. One last one I do want to give you is that every Sunday we have the red star and the premium orb blitzes. So I'm actually not sure how this works for new players because if you're below level 50, you can't get red stars, right? So I'd actually be interested to hear in the comments, do you guys have the red star blitz below level 50? If you do, what happens? You just get the stuff and you can't do anything with it till you hit level 50 I'm very curious about that uh, let me know in the comments but i would say if your roster is small it's hard right this is when i would save your charges for if you have to save if you're just not in a place where you just have them maxed out what i would do is save for this because red stars is obviously whether we like it or not one of the biggest differentiating factors in the game premium orbs are all right you can get 15 typically of a character that can help but it is random it's all random but I would say do both of these milestones if you can. If you had to choose one, I recommend the red star orbs. But we really need to be doing both if possible. That's what I recommend. And I think that it is going to be your best bet. Same tricks apply. You can drop down tiers. You can you know, manipulate the multiplier the way that you want to. So uh, last thing I wanted to just really explain to you guys is that just make sure your expectations are in the right place. I mentioned this briefly earlier, but just know you're not going to score as many points as some of the other higher players who may be your friends or just people you see on the leaderboards. If you're a newer player, you're not going to be able to do that. And understanding that is half the battle. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if someone's been playing for two years, well, the game hasn't been out that long, but if you've been playing for a year and you're trying to compare yourself to that person, you've been playing for three months, it's not going to work out. You know, a saying that I like to remember, I don't even know where this comes from, but I heard it when I was younger. And it's, uh, the saying is comparison is the thief of joy. And, uh, you know, essentially what that means is if you compare yourself to other people, you're going to take the fun out of things. You're going to ruin things. That's good advice when it comes to relationships, games, jobs, lives, anything. And so practically, I think it helps here because it's like, if you just look at it and you say, okay, well, this person is this, this person is this. And it's like, well, there's a reason. And you can't just sit there and compare yourself to it because you're not there yet. You can be, you can set that goal. So just make sure to think about it like that. Cause this mode can really cause you to get frustrated and want to quit. I know that I was there myself. So just make sure, um, you just, you're, you just keep your head in the right space. So if you guys are interested in seeing more of these beginner series videos, I can do those. I can make, uh, I was thinking about doing some like store farming guides. Uh, I could do some like character farming guides and just what teams to be farming for raids or for just in general or however you want to do that. Let me know. I would love to make those if people are interested in them. I'm just not sure if people are. So let me know if they are. I would love to be able to help out with that. So essentially that's it guys. Uh, I think that that pretty well covers things. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll answer them and then potentially make another video. This video is in response to some comments that were made. So that's why I'm making this video. It's because I felt like I had more to cover because comments reminded me of things. So if you leave a comment, maybe I'll make a video because of you. Pretty cool. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if this video helped you. We're doing great. Channel's growing like crazy. It's awesome. I love it. It's so encouraging and just exciting. I'm really excited about all that. And as always, guys... Make sure to follow on Twitch. Link is in the description. We stream all week long and have a great time doing it. So I'd love to have you guys join me there. In the meantime, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.